Heyo, duckies, Andy here, and the plugin is finally here. The plugin we've all been waiting for, Exceldro has made it. It is the OBS source profiler. What this will do is basically tell you what resources each source, filter, pretty much anything inside of OBS is using, so you can make sure, well, you look after your setup and you don't get encoding overloaded or anything like that. Something to note before we just get into the video is this will only work on OBS 31, which it is in beta right now that you could download straight from the Git website or even update it directly through OBS. Um, just bear that in mind. I've done a full video on the new OBS, so I'll leave that link down in the description as well. Once you've got it all installed, all you need to do is jump up to tools and you get the performance viewer. And this will basically tell you absolutely everything that's going on inside of your OBS. It's just like using Task Manager in Windows. So you've got a bunch of different settings on here. The first thing is refresh interval. This is how much, how quickly it's updating basically every tick. It goes down to 500 milliseconds and you can obviously crank it all up as well and that will impact performance. Uh, so just leave it on one second, that's absolutely fine. Uh, we've got every scene that we can see just up here that is in my OBS and you'll be able to see what everything is currently using. So breaking this down a little bit, you've got say sub items here on the right hand side. This is basically how many different filters, sources and everything like that is in that particular scene or element. So each one of these has a drop down in there, which you can see all these filters. Don't be worried about how many filters and things that you've got in there because as you can see, these are literally doing nothing right now. These are all move filters that I've got and they're not doing anything. You can see the CPU percentage, GPU total is not doing anything. So just because there's a lot there doesn't mean anything. So don't worry. Um, but this is just going to help you find out what is using those resources. So as you can see, if I change scene to say minimum stream goals, that's got a bunch more things on it. You'll see this will start to change. Minimum stream goals now is doing 3.7% total. Well, moving up to 4%, and we can see what, what everything in there is using. And it's usually your filters like your shadows and, and stuff like that that is going to be using a lot of your resources. All these columns at the top, before we start getting into what it all means, is when you right click, you can change and add different um, kind of filters that you, that you want to put on there. So if you choose type, it will tell you what type source that is. So you can see these are all move filters, move source, move source, move action. And you can see what everything is. Uh, you've got whether or not it's active or not. So you can see if something is active. So that means it's literally visible inside of OBS currently, which is again, a really nice way to find out, oh, is this filter currently on? You can just find out. Yes, it's on, that's why it's using a lot of resources. Similar for enabled, you've got things like tick average and tick max. So each one of these that I'm about to talk about has an average and a max. And the average, everything is recorded over a five second period. So over the last five seconds, it will average how much CPU, GPU, and how many ticks it's done in that five second average. Just so you know where it's getting these figures from is the past five seconds. And obviously it keeps updating as it goes on. So your tick is basically everything a source can do uh, that's actually not rendering, if that makes sense. Um, but you, you'll be able to see what, what's using a lot. And when you start experimenting and pushing like blurs and things, you'll see, oh, that makes so much more sense why OBS is slowing down. We've also got the CPU stuff. So we've got CPU average, CPU max. So you can see what's using stuff um, just here. So I can see that it's probably these groups that are doing the most. And it looks to me like it's these crop filters and the image mask that is using quite a bit of the, the CPU. Again, being able to find these individual things is really, really useful. Uh, we've got the same for GPU as well. So we've got GPU average, GPU max, GPU total, and the percentage as well. Um, that is all there. Easy for you to click on, click off. One really good thing about all these context um, kind of filters that you've added, the word is just like uh, failing me right now. Um, you can actually save it. So when you close this down and reopen the window, it will remember exactly the same format that you've had everything. And what's really nice about this is it also filters. So as you click these, it will actually prioritize the top, lowest, or no 
um, no saying so it, you can track what is using the most because it'll always be at the top which is really cool so if i select this um total percent at the end here you can see all the things that are using the most resources are all there um obviously we've got the reset button as well which obviously resets um i think that's it for all these there is input fps and output fps this is for media sources so when you're using a media source so i've got media source playing just here if i go into my scene just here find this media source because it's just called media source and i'll turn on the input fps you can see it's 60 because it's 60 frames per second video and then you've also got the output fps so this will allow you to see if your video is lagging maybe it's not in a good format and it's causing it uh, causing rendering issues you can actually pinpoint oh is that video maybe i need to change the format of it because obviously it's not rendering correctly and it's the same for the input best and output best this is telling you how long it's taken to kind of render the frames and stuff like that i have fed back to excel drone and he's going to be adding it that it will tell you what these numbers mean so what their measurements of it's on his to-do list and he's also going to remove some of these colorings for things that don't actually need the colorings as i said about these colorings let's just grab a source so i'm going to go over to uh the the minimum stream goals just here right and i'm going to add a filter and i'm going to add a blur filter for now and see if we can just crank it i should have probably used something a little bit more uh kind of crazy so if i just crank that all the way up you'll see that this will start increasing there you go so your gpu has gone to blue now so what this blue color means is that we are using over 25 percent percentage is basically the time a frame is allowed to take based on what your obs frame rate is so if you're running at 60 frames a second it all corresponds to that but again just higher the number worse it is keep everything as low as possible obviously there's no harm if you do exceed a hundred percent basically if, if if it's over a hundred percent for for a long period of time is that's gonna start causing stuttering um which means you're gonna get drop frames and everything like that you will get your encoding errors um if it stays persistent and everything like that and you don't want that do you so obviously just keep it under the 100 um so if i just keep cranking this i'm going to put this on 100 just here even though it looks like it's not doing much because there's not really much blurring it's still running the math behind so what happens if i duplicate this and now i've got two of these running you can see we're we're not in a good time right now we've gone to red yellow means that you're running over 50 percent and then also red is you're over 100 percent, and it kind of shows how much this stuff has been lying to you a little bit <laughs> so obviously this is still a work in progress so exceldra would love any feedback you've got make sure you do send it over to him on his guild page or even just leave it in the comments here i'm pretty sure he will read them so keep keep feeding it back because that's the best way that we can keep improving pieces of software like this there is a drop down menu in the top left hand corner which will allow you to filter things a little bit more so right now you can just see all the scenes because we've got scene selected I'm going to turn these off for a second <laughs> but we can also choose source and this will bring up every source that's in obs so i if i press this total percent i can filter what is using the most okay it's this source this is using the most in obs currently um, and that way you can work out what is using the most and that includes filters as well so you can see all of the different filters and then obviously format them so you can see what is using the most resources same for transitions as well because if you're using something maybe like a stinger transition or something like that that's using a media source they are still using quite a few resources and you'll be able to see exactly what they're doing because uh, obviously you need to similar to when we we're talking about media sources it works the same way you want to make sure you that your format is, and everything is correct for obs to handle it smoothly epos vox has got a ton of videos on that kind of stuff so make sure you go over to his channel because he, he did like a 30 minute video that was insane um on everything like that and you've also got all this is actually showing a bunch of hidden sources as well which is crazy to think so this includes all your transitions and your show and hide transitions everything will be in here that you'll be able to see so if i turn on now the type we able to organize these by type so you can see all the different things just here and if i scroll all the way down i believe we'll be able to see some 
um, source clone audio wrapper, for instance, that's a bit of a hidden source. Another handy feature in here is the, the ability to filter. So if I type in, say, crop, for instance, I can see every single thing that says crop. And obviously, if I change the, the filter here as well to just source, it will just pull up all the sources, or I can even go to filter, and then it's just a list of all the filters. So you can easily manage all of your sources, filters, scenes like that. Really handy little search function. I did feed this back to Exceldro uh, about, can, can we get that docked? into OBS, uh, the performance view, and he was like, no, I don't want it to do that because it uses extra resources because it's running quite a lot of stuff, which makes sense. So when you are using this, don't leave it up when you're live because it's gonna be utilizing more resources. So don't obviously keep it open, otherwise you might run into some problems that you wouldn't normally run into, if that makes sense. Plus, doing the performance viewer, it will give you that extra little bit of headroom so you can be like, right, if I'm under now, I'm definitely under when the performance viewer is not there. And the last thing is just keep it under 100%. Like, do your best to keep everything as low as possible. Now that we've got some way of seeing what filters are using the most, you can start using your filters more um, smoother. For instance, if you're using the composite blur by Finite Singularity, you know how you've got all your different kind of blur types. Like, uh, we always say use dual coarse because it's not as performance hitting as something like gaussian so uh, now you'll be able to see all that performance in the viewer so you'll be able to work out what uses the least and it'll probably still look very similar if not the same if this video has helped you out make sure you do like it and also subscribe because i'm always very quick on getting these new videos out including the new obs 30 one video oh my god so just watch it here it's pretty good obviously i'm moving studio so just bear with <laughs> Put your rock over the stone.